What's up, this is Richie from the Where We Wild YouTube channel, and today I'm gonna to be taking apart this brand new Corrado MGL 151. Uh, just got this reel. I have another one, I got the 151 HG, uh, but uh, I decided to get the lower gear ratio to throw some crankbaits with, so I'm gonna take it out of the box for the first time, tear it apart, tune it up, and uh, yeah, man. Hopefully you guys uh, can follow along if you're trying to take yours apart. Let's get into it. There she is. These reels are sick, dude. I think this is the first time I shot one of these videos at night, so hopefully this light is sufficient. And there's not too bad of a shadow or anything like that. All right, brand new. I find it a little weird that it didn't come with any paperwork, but uh, I don't need it. As long as this thing's all good, and we're gonna find out too when I take it apart. All right, let's see. Last one I did was the Shimano SLX XT, I believe. So uh, this one's probably gonna be a little different, but let's get going. Start with this screw right here. Now, as I say all the time, first time you take these things apart, there could be uh, a little Loctite, which there is on this. You can see it's a little blue. Careful. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little blue Loctite on there. And uh, yeah, man, sometimes the first time you try to take these cases off, it's a little sketchy just because they've never been broken loose. All right, take this nut off. Should be a 10 millimeter going to the right because it's a left handed reel. A little pressure. There it is. I'm used to taking these SLXs apart lately, so we'll see how different this one is. It's been a while. All right, I already heard something go. All right, no washer on the back. Usually they stick. This time it didn't. Keeping pressure on this thing because it's very spring-loaded. And then under here should have one of those little pins, I guess. Ooh, this one's deeper than the SLX. All right, there's our little pin in there. Try to keep that intact too. Just drop that. See that little pin? Hopefully you can see that. Try to keep that in there. A lot of little parts, man. All right, next up we got the spring. And then we got this little nut here, and you'll notice that there is a groove. This light is a uh, good enough little groove on the top side. And we're just gonna turn it to the right a little bit, and remember that that groove faces up so the spring fits in there. Twisting off to the right, and I can already see a washer underneath there. And it's that basic washer that's usually on all these where the copper side is facing down and then there's a shinier well not shinier but more of a gray side that's sticking to the washer so copper side next up we got our little spring tension washers and they're in the cupped position like parentheses facing each other. A little traffic noise outside, sorry about that. Yeah, these are opposite each other, pretty much always are. <clears throat> Next up we are going to, I'll take the spool out. Little open and close door there. 
gently pull this spool on out. Is that a bearing on there? I don't think so. Alrighty. So, bearing number one right here. We are going to take the little spring clip out. And that way we can take this bearing out and wipe all the factory grease off and oil it. This is going to be a little difficult with this angle. And I'm sorry for any shadows, but... Hmm. Man, that's a bad angle, boy. These things can go flying, man, so just kind of keep your finger over it. Slippery little sucker. You know what? I might use a different tool for this. It is really tight in there. This is way tighter than I'm used to dealing with here. There it is. That was a little project, wasn't it? Unbelievable. All right, got that thing out, finally. I'm gonna get this bearing out. I can already see it's covered in all kinds of crap. So, uh, here's our little bearing remover tool. And I will link that in the description for you. And it just basically hooks right through the center of the bearing and you can pull it right out. Okay. Let's give this thing a little wipe off. Sometimes I actually like to use a Q-tip. All right. All the grease is off of that. And then we're just gonna oil it up a bit. Lucas Real Oil, good stuff. I'll link it in the description. And we're just going to put a decent little drop on each side. Ooh. I'm just working out a little bit. I'm going to pop this thing back in there. Just like that. And then we're going to throw our little spring clip back in, which I hope is easier to get in than it was to get out. Just gonna wipe any grease off it real gently. No grease on your bearings. All right, say a prayer. Yep. Apologize once again for this angle, but you're basically just laying it in there and then you're just going to start from one end and work your way around just to try to get it in. One end will easily go in. Alright, that was way easier to get in than it was to get out, I'll tell you. Alright, so that bearing's all good. Little bit of grease right here we're just going to clean up. That is the little dial for your outside brake adjustment, that little screw. Sometimes that little screw right there, if these dials are too hard to turn, you can loosen that screw a little bit, but you gotta be real gentle and real careful with it. But I'm not gonna mess with that. And when they're brand new like this, you know, it, it takes a little time to, you know, loosen that up. So you can always throw a tiny little bit of oil in there, right around that screw, just tiny, tiny, tiny bit and let that get in there. All right, close this thing up. There it is. All right, that took a minute. Bearing one, done. Take this uh, tension knob off to the left. Nice and easy, don't remember if there's a spring in there or not. There is not. There are a couple little um, spacers in there and they're so tiny that they stick to the back of that cap but you can see it it's like a square shape in there pretty crazy all right next bearing 
hopefully this one comes out a little bit easier. So I'm just basically starting on one side and just trying to pry that up. But I'm gonna hover my finger over it because they will go. They will go flying. Nice, that was way easier. Someone actually just commented like a day or two ago on another video and was like, oh man, I lost that little spring clip. And uh, I was just, I gave them the part number so they can replace it. All right, so that's interesting. Now, instead of just a bearing in here, um, like there's been on, on most, most of the other reels I've been working on, this one has a little set of, um, okay, just one actually rubber piece. Ooh, no, it is two. It is two. Tiny little washer there, and then a bigger piece here. And so we're just gonna remember that order. And it came out like that. I'm just gonna clean out any grease that's in there. Jeez. Take the grease off the bearing. And now you can kind of put the schematic up on a screen in front of you when you do this stuff, or you can uh, take pictures as you go and just try to remember you know, that moment when you, you took that little piece out, like, oh, you know, which way did that come out? It's very easy to just be like ripping things out and then you're like, oh shit, is it backwards? Is it this way? Is it this way? So just go real slow and just make sure you know uh, where everything's going. All right, so this bearing is all cleaned off. Same drill, just gonna drop a little oil in it. there. Sweet. <clears throat> I'm just going to wipe this little part off gently just to get any of the uh, grease off. And we're going to remember which way it went in. All right, there you go. So you just make sure it's nice and even and then you can send it down. There it is. You heard that nice little click? That's what you want. Little o-ring here. What's going in next? And I guess we'll just use a little bit of a tweezers to just kind of send that down. In there. It's going to be hard to see in there, all those black pieces. And, um, and then we can get the bearing back in. Scent. All right, cool. Bearing number two. No grease, fresh oil, baby. Little spring clip, wipe off. And let's send this thing in here. Now, a lot of times you can use your fingernail, but uh, there it is. Make sure it's all sat in there nice, and you're cool. All right, so keeping that uh, tension knob off, now we can get into the old uh, the old case. Let's see. All right, so I've learned my lesson with these brand new reels lately, and instead of using a Phillips, I'm gonna start with a flathead. This one might be a little big, but the flathead um, has actually been easier for me lately with these the first time I'm taking it off just to bust them loose and then I'll switch over to the uh, Phillips head that might fly and then once uh, once I bust them open we'll, we'll switch over this one's got one two on on the top here and on the bottom you got two more so we're going to start with these top two, and, and they're usually the hardest to bust loose right off the bat. So you don't want to strip them, man. I think on my HG version here, I ended up stripping one of the screws the first time I ever took it apart. Not that bad, but I still did it a little. There it is. Woo! God, I hate that first time. There it is. Good lord. That is just frightening. 
And I'm just going to stick with this just to bust these. These are usually easier. Yeah, that's all good. Just those front ones, man. And scary. All right, those are cool. Now we can switch over to the old Phillips and we'll crank these out of here. Start with the top one. Okay, place it up here. And I always put it in the pattern that I found them. Just way easier. Number two, and that one is slightly lower than this, so I'm just gonna place them in that order, just one down. Those little dividers up there are sweet to have, man. I say it every time, but I will link this mat and all the tools and oil and everything that I'm using in the description. All right, so on the top of the slide here, there's a little bit of a longer screw. Put that down the bottom. And down this slope is usually where the longest screw is, but those are the SLX reels. It's about the same. All right, good stuff. And away we go. Oh boy. Is it because my hands are slippery? Might need a little. There it is. A little love. Alright. Whoa. Interesting. Alright. So, first and foremost, we're going to take these springs off the yoke. That way they don't go flying. I'm going to reach in here and grab this little piece inside here, which is in, it's like your roller clutch inner tube. Take that out. Damn, it's slippery. Pull that out of there. Now there's a lot of grease in that one way roller bearing, which is sitting right here. And um, that's pretty much a friction driven piece, you know? So you really don't want much oil or grease to hit that. So I'm just gonna clean that up a bit. And if I really wanted to go nuts, I can completely pop that out. Actually, it would go this way. Um, but it's not so, so bad. I'm just going to take what little grease there is off it. Make sure there's no hairs from the Q-tip. Cool. I already oiled this bearing that's in there. And that piece is good to go. This is covered in grease. Can dry that off. Q-tip through the middle. Make sure there's no grease. Put that there. All right, now we're down to some fun stuff. So first and foremost, we are going to take this main gear off and it'll have the drag washers and the ratchet and all that stuff in there. Pull that off nice and gently. Paying attention to what's underneath. So you got a little carbon fiber drag washer. And then there's gonna be another, another one under there. So we'll take this out. That's a tiny little drag washer. And this thing has like 13 pounds of drag, I think, this real little ratchet. And before we pull it off, I can already tell that there's a flat side to this and it's facing up. There it is right there. Very flat on the top and a little bit more rounded on the bottom. So just remember that. Wiping off the grease. And then I'm just basically going to keep all this stuff in the order I found it. We are going to hook this up with some um, drag grease, and then in this one, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull this off, and this will have a bigger drag washer in there. If I can get to it. Damn, that's heavy. That's a big one. Crazy. Look how thick that thing is. Wild. Taking off the factory grease. Clean her up. And just to point out, there was a flat side and this side with the groove and that groove side was pointed down. And the reason 
is because that outside rim right there, if you can see, is the same shape as that drag washer. So that's what's going to be pushing down on it. Skinny one, but uh, all right. There's that drag washer. Oop. Both carbon fiber. That's probably why it's got a heavier drag. Cleaning up any grease inside there. Wasn't much in there to begin with. Side. All right. So now we're gonna take very, very little on this, man. These usually come stock with uh, a little more grease on them, I'm surprised. But I'm just gonna take whatever little factory grease there is off these, and since they're brand new, I'm just gonna give them like a little rub on this paper towel just to knock off any of the loose carbon fiber, which sometimes you will see come off. There's not much on there. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but you'll see a couple of black spots on there if you really look at it. And that's just the carbon fiber breaking off. These are pretty dry, man. Yeah, you can see it there too. All right, cool. <clears throat> so now we're gonna use some of our cow's drag grease here. And we are just gonna get a tiny little coating on these drag washers. Not a crazy amount, just a nice clean coating and it'll soak it up like a sponge. You might pull off some little black dots of carbon fiber. You just wanna make sure you clean that off. It's crazy, you start with some of this stuff and it's like, oh shoot, I put too much on. And then like five seconds later, it like soaks up into nothing. But you just want a nice clean coating. Don't really, really cake it on. Just nice and clean. And every once in a while, you can just wipe your fingers off if it gets a little too sloppy on you. All right, so that looks good. And we're just going to place this right where it was here. On top of that. A little cog. And then we're just going to do the same thing with this one. A little dab. Throw it on. And we're just going to slowly work it around. Work it in. It's like painting with Bob Ross over here. I haven't, I haven't even gotten to my paintbrush yet. Must be getting hot in here. Air conditioner just turned on. All right, we be cool. And we're just gonna throw that back in the main gear here. Beautiful, nice and sat down. There's a little extra right there I don't need. And then, like I said earlier, flat side up the little indentation side down. Right on. That's it for the drag grease. If I can close it. There we go. Moving on. Drag is ready to rip. All right. Next up, we have our pinion gear and our yoke. We're just gonna slowly pull up on that. Whole thing's gonna come off. Just like that. And this goes in a specific way. And how you tell is there are two ramps. There's a ramp right here and a ramp right here. And they need to match up with this. So when we put that back on, that's how you tell. Now, I say this a lot, but 
if you're just maintaining a reel and you don't need to replace the main bearing right there, you don't have to worry about these two little screws and taking this whole thing off. If you take these two screws off, everything kind of falls apart on you. So it's, it's like a last resort. If you need to replace this bearing, if it's bad, that's the only time I'll ever mess with these screws here. So this thing's brand new. I'm just gonna drop some oil in there after I clean this up a bit. Make sure there's no grease around that bearing. That's a very, very important bearing right there. Clean up any extra little grease I see. I'm gonna add my own. So just anywhere where you see any real sloppiness, you, uh, you can just get rid of a Q-tip. Cool, you're gonna hit our bearing in there and you're gonna go right off to the side, right next to the black. If you can hopefully get my hand out of the way for you. Can you see that, sir? There it is. And we're just gonna take our little bearing tester, spin that bad boy around a bit. Cool. I'm just gonna go one more little drop off the side there. Cool. All right, very cool. Now, there's another bearing that sits under this, but I'd have to pull this whole thing off and uh, that's a bit of a job. So just for basic real maintenance here, I mean, we're hitting the majority of the bearings, but you know, I may be able to throw a tiny little bit of oil underneath there if I wanted to. And it would probably make its way into that pairing eventually. But yeah, all good. So we are just going to clean up our pinion gear here. Pretty brand new baby. Clean up our yoke. And then we're just gonna grease up a couple things here. And we'll be ready to put this bad boy back together, sir. Cool. Pen reel grease. And now it's, now it's Bobby Ross time up in here. We're gonna do a little painting. Take a tiny little bit of grease and we're gonna hit these where these two little cogs meet. And just slowly spread that around. And, and you don't want too much, man. I always say it, it's, uh, you don't want it to be sloppy. You don't want it to build up in your reel. You just want a nice clean coating. Cool. Beautiful. Now next up we are going to just hit these little ramps right here. There's a little bit of factory right there and uh, Q-tip ain't going to cut it. So grab another little tool of the trade here. A little uh, toothpick. And we're just going to take out that, that factory stuff. Just cause we're gonna add our own. Cool. Tiny little coating on these ramps right here. Posts. And then I like to put a little bit right here where this little arm moves back and forth. Take a tiny little bit and put it right in this area here where this contraption moves back and forth. Very light. A little bit on the spring. Very, very light. Just to keep it a little coated and protected. All right, that's all good. Next up, we are going to, I guess, put our pinion gear back in. And we're just gonna grease that up really quick. 
and we're gonna just hit these top teeth right here. But don't go nuts, because it's gonna share it with the main gear, and then you're gonna have a big buildup of it, and you don't want that. So I'm basically just tapping in the tiniest little bit here. Just tap it in, tap it in. Give it a little tappy, tap, tap, tap a root. I'm getting silly, dude, it's like 10.30 at night. Also going to take the tiniest little bit and just throw it on this yoke here, just right in the middle. Not much. It's going to all hit there anyway, but I just put a little bit. Tiny little coating. Now we are going to get this pinion back in. Come here, baby. I need a balance beam. Thank you. Slide this yoke right underneath those teeth that we just creased up. And then we're going to line these up with these ramps here. And you'll know it's right side up because these ramps match perfect, like I said earlier. Right on the posts. Make sure this is all straight. And sliding down right like that. Just like that. All right, we're moving along here. All right, so now we're gonna start putting this thing back together, man. We're gonna hit this with a little grease, and I can do that in my hand. If you, if you want, you can put this all together and then um, grease this main gear, but I'm gonna just do it in my hand real fast. So there's a few different ways you can do this. Easiest way by far, just squeeze the side here so that um, doesn't fall off. I'm just gonna tap it in instead of painting every little area of this, if you go around and you put it everywhere, um, you're gonna kinda have like a buildup of it. So just tap in a little here and there, like maybe some on this side and some on this side, and you're just tapping the brush on there. Like that. It's like where it's almost like uh, sloppy looking. For a second like sticks up and then you just take your finger and run it around the whole thing and that pushes it down into those gears see all that and you just send it right in And you know, you can just individually just paint, but it's kind of easier to just slap it a couple times and just rub your finger right across it. And you don't want any on the bottom here, anything sloppy on the top, anything sloppy on the bottom. You just want it on those teeth. It's pretty clean, man. All right, so the majority of the teeth are covered. There's a couple little patches where they're not, but it's all gonna start working in when we throw this back together, so. I'm gonna take our cog. Actually, you know, I'll put this down so I can show you how this works. Cog with the drag washer on the flat side of it. And we're just gonna stick this down here, and the very bottom is keyed. So you gotta make sure that thing sits perfect. Here, I'll even take this off for you so you can see better just sits like that, it's not gonna catch this mechanism right here. So you wanna just slowly rotate it. There it is, did you see that, how it popped in? So now, that's what makes your button work and disengages the reel. So you're gonna cast. Now it's gonna be hard to do with this hand. And then that catches it. Uh, I don't know if I can do it with this hand, it's so slippery. There it is. So slippery, sorry, but that's what happens. That cog pushes that thing back and disengages the reel so you can start reeling in. Or re-engages the reel, rather. Washer. There you go. Just gotta make sure that thing sit down. Nice and seated. Next up, main gear that we greased up. Another key on the top here. 
So you just kind of rotate it until it lines up. And then you're just going to slowly go down next to this pinion gear. And just go gentle until it all lines up like that. Where the pinion gear meets that main gear. And like I said earlier, it's going to start building up that grease right around that pinion gear. And the more you reel this thing in, the more it's going to spread. So I actually like to do this, you know, with my hand for a second because it reveals that you maybe put a little too much on. And there it is. So we are just going to dry this brush off and I'm just going to take off that excess crap because it's, it's just going to be stuck there. Pretty cool, huh? It spreads so fast. There you go. That's that's a healthy, healthy amount. That's nice. Cool. Take some of that and just hit these posts, which we kind of already hit anyway, but very cool. Yeah, looks good. And a little bit to the outside. All right, we are ready to put this thing back together. Let's do it. Am I done with this grease? I may need this grease at the end, but I think we're cool right now. So we're gonna put these springs back on these posts here. If they don't stick to my hands. There we go. One on there. One on the other post. Cool. And then you're going to take this little piece here. Don't forget about it. And we're going to take this little key here. See how there's two, it's like a little fork piece, and that's going to go right in those two holes there. You got to make sure that's sitting all the way in. If you aren't lined up, it's going to be sitting above it. So you just make sure those line up and it sits perfect. Now we can get our case back on, cleaned all that up, hit that bearing, good to go. Always just take a second, make sure you got it all on there before you go putting this back on. Springs are on, painting is lined up. That's in there good, drag washer's all good. I think we're cool. I'm just going to slowly put that back on, gently, and just till it sits. I need a little bit of shimmy, but you'll hear it and feel it push down into place. Cool. A little extra grease. All right, let's get this uh, tightened up, man. Tighten her up. Just always make sure that, you know, that thing is locked all the way on. Make sure there's no wide gap anywhere in there. Everything's in place. So let's see, I guess we will start with these back ones here. Tight is tight. One down the bottom of the slope here. Come on, big. Come on, big fingers. Nice. Grab these two. This one is on the top. Really get a nice lock up. Tight is tight, baby. You can strip these things real easy. It's not the highest quality on these screws, man. They, you can really strip the heads out fast. I need a little, ooh, that was sweet. I just shook it in. All right, baby, cover's back on. We're almost there. Whew. 
All right, I guess we are gonna throw our tension back on. You always wanna do that before you start messing with the handle because uh, it's much harder to put on. This just tightens to the right or your left. Okay, I guess we will throw the handle back on, dude. Am I missing anything? No, I think we're good. All right, let's get this handle back on. So first and foremost, we got our little spring washers that are cupped. I don't know if you're gonna be able to even see that there, but they sit like this, like parentheses. I'm just gonna slide those on. And a lot of times you gotta shimmy them down. Okay. Next up we got our little nut here with the brass copper colored facing down little washer and it's just on your nut there. And we're gonna just tighten this down to the left. And you don't need a tool to tighten this thing up. We're just kind of gonna hand tighten it. Remember that groove is facing up in the, in the uh, nut there. Okay, and if you want to get a little tighter, you can just hold on to that and give it a little extra twist, but it's all good. Spring, so it's perfect right in there. And now the balancing act of the old star drag and handle. So we're just gonna hover our finger over this. Well, I'm going to hover my finger over this so it doesn't go flying. And I'm just gonna kind of anticipate the shape it is. You can see, you know, the square is right on the square. So just slowly push this down until that sits. And then we're just gonna support that star drag because of that spring. Your handle on top. And that just becomes a balancing act. I like to just spread my fingers over it and just keep pressure. Get our nut back on and we're gonna be tightening to the left on this thing. Hopefully you can see that. Cool. I'm not gonna tighten this all the way. I'm just gonna give it like one, just so I know the drag is clicking and uh, make sure that seems to be working. That's cool. Now we're gonna tighten this bad boy up. And now here's a trick that I kind of mentioned in all these videos. Now the nut has the how many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six sides to this thing, points. And it's the same shape that sits in this little cover here. So to get this cover to line up, you gotta make sure this nut is in the right position. So you're gonna tighten it down until it's snug. You can lock up on it. All right, now that it's getting tight, I'm going to try to line up one of the points of this nut with the hole here. And that usually helps ensure that this thing goes right on without a lot of problems. A lot of times I end up over tightening it and uh, I need to adjust it, but let's see if we can nail it on the first try here. Line those up. All right, so I didn't. You'll notice a little space in between there. I hope you can see that. So that means you either got to tighten it a little more or loosen it. I'm going to opt for tightening. Tightening. And there it is. Money. See how there's no gap there now? Crazy. And we're just going to get this little screw in. which may be a chore. I mean the hands of a surgeon, man. Ah, shaking. Cool. 
Now we're going to just throw our spool in. And this little spring right here and, and this little contraption right here, you can just add a tiny, tiny little bit of leftover grease uh, that was on your brush. That little screw there, just to help that door swing a bit and keep any water out. Slide in the old spool. Make sure that door is not in your way. Perfect. Close the old door. Lock it up. All right, man, we're almost done. Only thing left I want to do here is I want to get one drop of oil on this side of the worm gear here. You can see. And one on the other side. And we're just going to work that in for a moment. Alright, it sounds, uh, you know, brand new. It'll take some time to work in, but the more all that stuff works in, the better. And one last thing, I'm just going to put a drop of oil on each of the little handle knobs and just kind of keep them upside down so that oil drips in there as you work it around a little bit. All right, man. I think that just about does it. All right. Whew, just shot oil in my face. <laughs> and then you just, you just want to Hang out with this sink for a little bit, man. Take it over to the couch, watch some TV, and just kind of work it in, you know? Brand new reels, uh, takes a minute. Takes a minute to get them all dialed in. Definitely feels good. I swear, just the last 10, 20 seconds of doing this, I can feel a difference from when I first started uh, messing with it, which is crazy, yeah. Oh yeah. So take it over the couch, play with that button a little bit, and yeah man, you just play with it for a little bit. Work all work all that grease and oil in, and it's just gonna get smoother and smoother. So that pretty much wraps it up, man. That is the Shimano Corrado MGL 151. Um, same deal if it's you got the right-handed version, I'm sure you might have to take the nut the opposite direction on the right-handed reel, but other than that it should all pretty much be the same story. These are really sick reels, man. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, and if you're into this sort of thing, don't forget to hit subscribe. We put a new video out every single week. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Later. This one's coming over to the couch right now to watch some Netflix with me. See ya. If you want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to check out the rest of the Where We Wild YouTube channel, where we post a brand new video every week. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever we post a new adventure. Thanks for watching.